Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have another interesting problem from the JE main deck of problems. And this one deals again with friction, but on a very interesting sloped surface. It doesn't have a constant slope. Let's read the problem. An inclined plane is bent in such a way that the vertical cross section is given by this equation, y equals x squared over 4, that's the equation of a parabola, where y is the vertical and x is the horizontal direction. If the upper surface of this curved plane is rough with a coefficient of friction of 0.5, the maximum height in centimeters at which a stationary block will not slip downward is, and we have to give the answer in centimeters. They didn't give us a figure, so let's draw a figure. Right away, that's an equation of a parabola. So let's go ahead and draw that. So that would look kind of like this. Whoop. I'm not going to the origin this way. Let's try again. All uh, right, that's better. And so notice that if you put a block up here somewhere, and the block would be at a certain height y, like this. And notice that at this moment, you'd have a um, an angle, let's call it theta, with the horizontal. We have mu equals 0 0.5, and presume that's static friction. We have a mass over there. And so, what's the maximum height? What's the biggest value for y that we can have in centimeters? Okay, how do we do that? What's the principle here? Well, the principle is as follows. Let's go to a, a sloped surface, just straight sloped surface like this. And we, let's put a mass on there. There we go. There's our mass, m. So we have the mg straight down. We have the perpendicular component, which is mg cosine of theta. We have the horizontal component, which is mg sine of theta. And then, of course, we have the normal force, pushing back this way, and the normal force would be equal to mg cosine theta. And then we have the friction force, which keeps the block from sliding. The friction force is equal to the normal force times mu, which is equal to mg cos theta times mu. And of course, looking at the incline, the thing that would keep the block from sliding down is that the friction force is at least as big as the mg sine theta. So the principle says, that the mg cosine theta times mu must be bigger than or equal to the mg sine theta. Oh yes, yes, yes. So we'll have an angle of theta right there. Okay, good point. And then the corresponding theta in here. Yeah, I was getting a little lazy there, wasn't I? Okay. <laughs> Now you can see it on both sides, you have an mg that cancels out. And then solving for mu, we get mu must be greater than or equal to the sine of theta divided by the cosine of theta, which of course is the tangent of theta. So that means that the tangent of theta must be less than or equal to mu, or theta uh, must be less than or equal to the inverse tangent. I don't know if we even need that or not, but anyway, there we go. So that's the angle at which it happens. So this is, I think, where we want to go. Okay, so that's the principle of things. Now, of course, we have a varying slope. So at some point, what we want to say is, if we find the angle theta, from that, we should be able to find y. Because, notice, we have an x and a y. And let's see here. Hmm, hmm, hmm. So opposite of adjacent. Well, we'll get to that in just a moment. Ah, we're given mu. Since we're given mu, this is a given quantity, we should be able to find the angle. So we could say that the tangent of theta, which by definition is opposite over adjacent, which is equal to mu which is equal to 0 0.5. So now we know that the opposite over adjacent is equal to 0 0.5. Okay? And where should we go next? Ah, we need to know the slope at this point. We need a slope 
which is opposite of adjacent, which is equal to 0 0.5. But we're given the equation of the line. The equation is that y is equal to 1 quarter x squared. So essentially what we're looking for is we're looking for dy dx and setting that equal to 0.5 because that's what the slope is based upon our principle here. So we can say that dy dx is equal to the derivative of this which would be 2 times 1 quarter 2 times 1 quarter x to the 2 minus 1 which is first power which is essentially 1 half x. And so that will give us a value for x because we know that this must be equal to 0 0.5. So if 1 half x equals 0 0.5, then x must equal 1. If x equal to 1, what is the value for y? So now we go back to the original equation right here, and we say that y, when x is equal to 1, is equal to 1 over 4, 1 squared. And of course, then y equals 1 over 4, when x equals 1. And of course, this is in meters because we use standard units of meters. So when we convert that to centimeters, therefore y equals 25 centimeters. And so the answer here would be 25 centimeters. And that's the answer they're looking for. They're looking for a numerical answer. So notice that this can get kind of convoluted, so let's go through it again to see what it says. We have a sloped surface according to the equation y equals 1 quarter x, 1 fourth x squared, and that's of course a parabola. We go to the principle since there's a rough surface, so if at some point it's too steep and the block will begin to slide down, but if it's not steep enough the block will stay in place, so we use the principle that as long as the mg cosine theta mu is bigger than the mg sine theta, the block will stay in place. So when we say that here, we can see that mg cancels out. We solve mu is equal to sine over cosine, which is a tangent, or the tangent of theta must be less than or equal to mu. So the angle must be small enough relative to u. Then we realize that the ratio is equal to 0 0.5 because mu is equal to 0 0.5. But then we want to find the slope on the equation. We take the derivative of the equation, and we then say that's equal to 0.5, which means that x must equal 1 at that point when the slope is equal to 0.5. And then we plug that 1 back in the original equation to find the corresponding value for y, realizing that the units are in standard units or meters. Convert that to centimeters, we end up with a quarter meter, which is 25 centimeters. And that is how we do this problem. And yes, can you do that in three minutes? It'd be tough, but you need to work fast. Again, that's the nature of these tests. The JE main also gives you a very limited amount of time, and you have to work really fast to get the answers, and that is how we do it.